So I want to jump back into second part of Great Exits. And we talked about a lot of stuff. You all be getting a lot of information. <laughs> I hope some of it you all are holding on to. But we want to learn how to walk away from a tomb and dead things from the one who did it best. Amen? Amen. And Jesus, I said, Jesus didn't just get up. He exited the tomb. Because getting up, being woken alive in a dead place is not good enough. You got to get out of the tomb. Amen? Amen. God didn't roll the stone away. So we're hearing it from John's perspective, and I want to remind you of the scripture. So I'm going to read it this morning. John chapter 20. And I'm going to read the first eight verses. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter, another disciple, and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. Everybody know that's John, right? Mm -hmm. well, if you didn't know, you know now. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciples started out for the, for the tomb. They were both running, but the one disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stopped and looked inside and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there. While that, the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first, which was John, also went in, and he saw and believed. He saw and believed. The Gospels are written, which are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are the story and the life of Jesus from the perspective of these people. Amen? Amen? And like anything else, when a group of people write about something, <coughs> you're going to get different perspectives. Some will say something, some will say other things, some will miss some other stuff. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. For instance, if I was to do a cartwheel right now, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> right? But if I was, to do a car for you right now, and I ask for you all to describe what happened, I'll get different accounts. Some people will say, the pastor ran, he flipped, he fell, he busted his lip, we had to call paramedics, <laughs> the rest of us had to pray. <laughs> all right? Others will say, he took three steps, and he jumped, he did a backflip and a half turn, and he landed on his right hip. Some people are more detailed than others. Do you all understand what I'm saying? And it's the same with the Bible. You read some versions of something and some others say something. Like, for instance, in this version of the story, John, he's abstract and he's not so detailed as some others. Because in Mark, Mark not only said who went to the tomb, but he also talked about what they said on the way. Now John only said Mary Magdalene went. John even forgot to let us know that Jesus' mother went. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mary Magdalene wasn't the only person who went. And if you read the other versions, you would see that. <clears throat> so in Mark, Mark chapter 16, it says, on the way they were asking each other, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? Who will roll away the stone from the entrance? Now, they were so excited that they forgot 
to figure out who would roll the stone away. Did y'all ever think about that? <laughs> Never thought about that, huh? But there's a lesson in there. Because you read the other versions, everybody, all you read is that they went to the tomb and they found the tomb open and But it never dawned on it until Mark wrote. Who rolled, who can roll the stone away? Because don't forget, they didn't know what happened was going to happen, even though Jesus predicted that it was going to happen. That was not something they were thinking about. They wanted to go and see Jesus. But then in Mark, Mark says, who will roll the stone away? And there's a lesson in there. Because on the way, even though they were discussing that, they did something that was very important. And that was, they kept going to the tomb. Mm -hmm. And the lesson there is, sometimes we think something that's a problem in the future isn't always a problem when you trust God. <laughs> Are you all hearing me this morning? Yes. Yeah. Because when you think that it's a problem, God already worked the problem out. Because God has sent an angel to move the stone. They didn't know that was going to happen. But they didn't let thinking that they didn't figure out how it was going to happen stop them from still going. Now I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning, but somebody is going through something and the Lord wants me to tell you that thing that you think is going to be a problem down the road God already got that solved. Mm -hmm. That is not going to be a problem. Because what he has been speaking to us lately is, trust me. Mm -hmm. Even when you can't see the answer to a problem that you think is a problem. Because a lot of things that you think is a problem, if you trust me, is not a problem. Mm -hmm. God has heard you. And by the time you get to where you need to be, he can have it worked out. Mm -hmm. Just like when they got to the tomb, the stone was rolled away. Stone. There are lessons in every portion of this resurrection story. You all hear me? God is telling me to tell you all this morning, the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you this morning, whoever it is, Keep walking. Amen. Keep walking. That's what they did. Yeah, they discussed it. But what was profound is they kept going. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of us, we see the problem down the road, then we want to stop. Mm -hmm. Are you all hearing me? Yes. You can't stop. When you trust God, it don't matter what you see. It don't matter what you hear. Because you can't figure it out, don't mean God can't figure it out. Amen? Amen. Amen. Keep walking. Don't allow that obstacle to stop you from moving forward. Because don't forget whose you are. Amen? Amen? The tomb was a cave with a big stone in front of it. And they didn't think about how they were going to move the stone, even though they wanted to see Jesus. But they kept walking. Not allowing the obstacle to intimidate them to the degree that they quit. But like I said, God already said they need to move the stone. Because that's how God is. He hears you and He works things out. Amen. Isn't it something? If you look back at your life right now, all the things that you thought wasn't going to happen, ain't God working out? Yes. Isn't that something? God wants us to get to the place where we stop stressing in the beginning. And let him do what he said he can do. And rest in him. 
Are y'all hearing me? Yes. And as individuals, that's, we got to work that on ourselves. But all of that comes with relationship. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And the closer and the better relationship that you have, the more he will rest in you. But you have all the things that he did for you in the past under your belt. And don't forget that. Then they got to the tomb. That's what the Bible says. They looked inside. And what? Jesus' body wasn't there. And they said, he's not here. Someone has taken his body. And we don't know where they have taken him. And that's what the book said? They assume because the tomb was empty that the enemy took Jesus. Mm. This is the second lesson now. Mm -hmm. They thought some goons came by and took the body when actually it was God. Could it be that some loss is an evil. All loss don't have to be bad. Amen. <laughs> Are you all hearing me? Yes. This is why we have to be careful labeling something as loss so quickly. <clears throat> Sometimes we got to live through some stuff because some things we lose we go through another season and we look back and we say, wow, that wasn't a loss. That was a blessing. Mm -hmm. I read it wrong. Right. Right. I was crying over a blessing. I was upset over a blessing. Thank God yeah. he had me covered. Are y'all hearing me? It wasn't a loss. It was a blessing. <coughs> so we got to be careful labeling stuff. And getting angry over things that God has deliberately taken out of your life. Because he knows you and he knows what you need. Mm -hmm. And he's saving you. Amen. Huh? Rewinds. Yeah, well, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> I said, God is saving you. He is removing those things because he knows what you need. Mm, when you need it. And when you need it. Thank God he interrupted some of our plans. Mm -hmm. And took some things away. Right. Amen? Amen. Yes. And a lot of times we screaming and crying. There are sometimes we trying to get back the very thing God don't want us to have to save us. Trying to pull the very thing that he took away. Mm -hmm. Trying to bring it back. He's trying to relieve you of stress. He's trying to bring stress back. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is why we need to trust God. This is where he's trying to get us. He knows what we need and when we need it. Amen. But it all comes down. Look at, look at the direction that all our sermons and teachings have been going in. Trying to get us to a place of trust. Not to lean on what? Your own understanding. And that's hard. That's hard. Yesterday, we had a Bible study along these same lines. We were talking about God and how we can talk ourselves out of a blessing. And how we need to trust God. And Dawn's son-in-law, Ben is his name, right? Yeah. Yep. He came and he gave us a wonderful example. And he said that him and his wife consulted a financial advisor to deal with their finances. 
and said this man started digging up in all their business. Want to know what this is for, what that is for. And not only that, start telling them what they should and shouldn't do. Now, they consulted him to get to a better place. Mm -hmm. This man was telling them what they should do to get to a better place financially. But it bothered them. It stirred up some things that somebody who they didn't know who was a stranger was telling them what to do and trying to dig into all their business. Mm -hmm. Well, why did you spend the money on that? Why did you do that? Why did you do the next thing? And this is what we go through with God. <coughs> He could take us to a better place. But we don't like him to tell us what to do. And especially when he started digging up. You blow up. It's, it's the truth. No, it's, true, right? it's, it's the truth. And these financial people want to know where every penny comes from and where it's going. But if you want to get to a better place 10 years down the road, then they got a plan for you, but they got to tell you, well, you can't do that no more. Yeah. And you say, well, I like doing that. If you want to get here, you got to do it. Are you all hearing me? But we forget sin. Sin is a serious thing. And because of sin, we won't have our way. We don't want nobody to tell us what to do. And that includes God. But if we want the reward that letting him direct us the direction that he wants to take us in will get us, then you got to let him lead. Either he can be Lord or he ain't. If you want financial advice, then you got to listen to your financial advisor. What's the sense of going and then not taking the advice and then staying in the same place? What is that? The definition of insanity. <laughs> Doing the same thing, expecting but expecting a different result. Mm -hmm. Everybody want eternity. Everybody want God, but nobody want change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? It's reality. Because if we do what he asks us to do, we'll be in a better place. And we're all working towards that. I told somebody, I was sitting down in, after, the, after the funeral, and I was sitting and talking to some people, and, and this young man, he was talking about how much he's struggling. He knows what God wants him to do, but he's struggling with some areas in his life. And he's feeling like, He's failing. I had to tell him, I said, you know something? The fact that you're struggling means that God ain't leave you. Mm -hmm. That's the struggle. Yeah. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. Now, when you start struggling, and you just <clears throat> do what you want to do, now you got a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing something and you're being convicted, remember I talked about conviction in it? God is still working on you because we know that it's not as great that any of us perish. And that's why you can't worry about what people think. Because people will look at you failing and judge you. Yeah. You can't worry about people. Let them go. God know you're trying. And you're trying to fall. But you get back up. And you don't feel good. That's good. The Holy Spirit ain't leave you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And we are all trying. But you got to try. Amen? Amen. You got to try. Yes, and in trying, we trip sometimes. That's how babies learn to walk. They fall down all the time. But they get back up. Then you see them holding on. You know what I mean? And then they let go and try to come to you and fall on the ground. But what? And I told him, I said, don't, don't, don't beat yourself up so hard. You keep trying. God knows your heart. And you are not a failure. I said, we are all trying. And that's something we got to be careful of. So, the Bible says, they go back. And Peter and John, they take off running. And the Bible says they get to the tomb. John gets to the tomb first, looking, saw the linen, and didn't go inside. Well, I can understand that. Because I'm the same way out. I don't do that. Now, some people walk right in the tomb. I probably have to wait 
a couple of people going. It's okay. <laughs> Peter, Peter comes. He goes right in. But Peter comes in and was confused. And the Bible says John comes in and believes. Do you know what he believes? They were saying that someone took Jesus. But when John came in, he got the revelation right away. Say ain't nobody took him. He got him and left. Because don't forget, Jesus told him that he was going to do this. But nobody thought about that. You all see the lesson there? And why we have to be intentional and watch out stuff? Because Jesus is telling us all the time. But we don't listen like that. <laughs> Are you all hearing me? Yes. The very thing that he said was right there. And we think of everything but what he said is what caused it. But it's good when you get to Revelation. John says, uh-uh. You -uh. made a mistake. Peter goes and sees the clothes. You know. John right away saw the headpiece on one side, the linen on the other side. And I've said this many times. I believe that the headpiece came off first. You know why? So he could see to take the rest off. Mm -hmm. And the lesson for us is, if we can get our head out first, the rest will follow. Mm -hmm. That is why it is so important for us to change the way we think, mm -hmm. because the Bible is up here. Mm -hmm. If you could get your head right, your body can follow. Okay. Do you all hear what I'm saying? Yes. If you could get your head right, the body will follow. The Bible says the head piece was in a different place than the other wrappings. And that's what the Bible said? Mm -hmm. Y'all want me to read it again? <laughs> and that's what the Bible said? Yeah. Oh, okay. Y'all ain't answering. <laughs> Y'all may think I'm making this stuff up. I'm making this stuff up. But I'm showing that we can learn from this. It's more than a story. There's lessons in here. And pieces of it. Because Jesus got out of that tomb. There are things we have to do to get out of the dead place. God moved the stone, but Jesus still did some things. And he's teaching us, you do these things, you get out. Get out of them dead linen clothes. But in order to see what's happening... Undo your head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get your head right. So you can see. Are you all hearing me? Yeah. It's a serious thing. The battle is in our heads. What do we think? What do we believe? Depending upon what you see or think, that's the direction you will go in. How you see things. That is why some of y'all need to praise God right now because your head is out, you're thinking right. You ain't thinking like you used to think. Amen? Amen. We have grown. We have matured. We're not where we used to be. And that right there is enough to praise God for. You're dreaming on another level. You're seeing things on another level. You believe on another level. Because you're understanding the importance of not being conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. If you get your mind out, the rest will follow. <coughs> Are you all hearing me? Yes. Get your head out, and your life will follow. So Peter went, on, went in, now John goes in. Peter goes in and was confused, but John made him believe. He was like, oh, no, 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 no. We made a mistake. You may ask me, Pastor, what was the mistake? Next lesson. 
The mistake was, next slide, looking for Jesus, the last place they saw him. Let that sit in. Looking for the Son of God, the last place they saw him. Think about it. Jesus told them everything that was going to happen. Remember I told you that Jesus gave the grave notice? You all don't remember me telling you all that? Yeah. That Jesus said, destroy this temple. And what? Well, that's given the grave notice. you got three days. Jesus, the last place they saw him. Big mistake. They made a mistake looking for Jesus in the last condition they saw him in. Looking for Jesus in the last position they saw him in. Guess what? There are some people looking for you in the last position they saw you in. And guess what? You ain't there no more. Huh? Looking for you in the last condition they saw you in. And guess what? You ain't there no more. Because nothing is impossible with God. Do you all hear me? Nothing. And as people of faith, don't even expect to be in the same place. Are you all hearing me? With Christ, all things are possible. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's okay if people, that's why you got to let people go. Because they don't expect you to change. But when you mature in your relationship with God, the mistake they can make is to look for you in the last place or condition they saw you in. And you let them know. I'm not there anymore. Mm -hmm. You see, the last time you text me, I was depressed. But I'm not there anymore. Mm -hmm. The last time you called me, I was naive. But I'm changing the way I think now. I got more wisdom now. I'm not there anymore. That is what you need to mm -hmm. say. Because why? You got Christ. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying all of this to bring one point you. And my point is, God rolled the stone away. We talked about this last mm -hmm. week. God rolled the stone away, but Jesus still had to get up and get out. God has rolled the stone away on many of our situations, but we're still sitting in a dead place, waiting for God to do something, and he didn't do what he had to do. Y'all remember I preached a sermon. You have my word. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. You have my word. Because we're asking God to do things that yeah. He's already done. Mm -hmm. Amen? Asking God, but well, what shall I do here? And He says, Well, I didn't text you. <laughs> you got the text. Read the text. me to say something I've already said thousands of years ago. Because all you got to do is open the book. If it's something different, sure. But a lot of these things, it's in the book. Are you still laying in a tomb where the doors open, the sun shining right there, and you still in the grave clothes? Some people, their situation may have been so bad that they felt like they were dead. And some people, God touched them, and what they do? They sit up. But they don't move. Some people don't even take the linens off. 
I said, a better place for you is on the other side of the door. And there's nothing blocking you but you. Amen? Amen? A few years back, when I really came to grips that being a pastor was the path God had me on, I had to discipline myself to do and not to do many things. You see, revelation and anointing don't just come because you ask God to give it to you. You gotta study. You gotta seek God and learn of Him. I had to discipline myself to be obedient and walk in the direction God was leading me. And that meant I had to give up a lot of things that I like and go in the direction that I wanted to go in. Are you all hearing me? And it's a choice that we all have to make. It's a personal choice. I was reading scripture and in Ephesians, Paul prayed a prayer for the people in Ephesus. And he didn't ask God to give them anything. He asked God to open their eyes so they could see what he had already given them. Do you all hear me? Let me read it for you. This is why we got to read the book. says all praise to God the Father our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ even before he made the world God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes <laughs> God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us, who belong to his dear son. He is rich in kindness and grace, that he purchased our freedom, and the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He showered us with kindness and wisdom and understanding. That means we already have it. Are you all hearing me? Yeah. He already did it. And many times we're asking for something we already have. Are you all hearing me? We're asking God for something we already have. Go to verse, go to chapter 3. I'm going to read from verse 14. Listen to this. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Mm. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And you may have the power to understand as all God's people should how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ through it. May you experience the love of Christ. Through it is too great. Through it is too great to understanding fully. Though you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and the power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who was able to through his mighty power and work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we may ask or think. Mm -hmm. What's 
scripture? Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 20, 21. May you experience the love of Christ, even though you won't fully understand it. Do you understand what I'm saying? May you have the power to understand. He's praying to God, keep us strong. And I was reading this, and I said, you know, we ask for so many things. But a lot of times we ask for things we already have. We just have to believe that we have it. He prayed that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened. So that they could see what was already done. More and more, God has given me the revelation. That he's not going to give me what he has already given me. Stop looking for something that you already have. And I'm understanding also more and more, the reason why we do that is because we don't fully understand who he is in us. Because the more we understand who he is in us, the more we'll understand what he has already given us. It's like your children trying to understand how deep your love is for them. And then they get into another situation and and they don't understand or believe that you still love them in this. Mm. And you stand there and say, but you're my child. I love you. Have you heard of people say, I don't understand why, they, why my son didn't come to me. Mm -hmm. You ever heard that before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why didn't they feel like they could come to me? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Relationship. Amen. Relationship. And God wants us to feel like we can come to Him. Amen? Amen. You have my word. Stop waiting on God to answer a prayer that He's already answered. He'll already tell you what to do. Discipline to follow what God wants us to do is a decision. I had to discipline myself to start doing things that I needed to do in order to do this. But don't come automatic. It's a decision. And when God starts opening doors and showing you certain things, you still have to make the decision. The tomb is open. Now you have to decide to walk out. Or you can stay there. In any event, you can make a decision. Some people don't realize that not making a decision is a decision. <laughs> Amen? I want to say something, but I don't want to make it political. And I don't want y'all to make it political. <laughs> Be mature enough not to make this political. Huh? <laughs> I was in a conversation the other day, and Trump came up, all right? So this person says, I don't agree with Trump, and I'm not going to vote for him. But I don't agree with the Democrats, and I'm not going to vote for them. I say, but you've made a decision. And they can understand. You understand? <laughs> well, I don't want him to win the next election. I said, well, but I don't agree with the Democrats, and, and, and they run on and on and on. I said, but if you don't vote, <laughs> you've made a decision for who win. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm right or wrong? You're right. <laughs> yeah. But people don't see that. They think that they're not making that, because that personal thing that they're dealing with, well, I'm not supporting him, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to do this. I said, but when you don't do this, you've made a decision. That make any sense to y'all? <laughs> and it's the same with us. When we just sit there and don't do nothing, we've made a decision. And some of us are in dead places in the tomb, and we won't get up and go out when the better place is through the door. Mm -hmm. 
My father always used to say to me, I'd rather you make a decision and it's the wrong one and then you could correct it than not to make a decision and just cause confusion on my job. <laughs> you have to make a decision. Because if you don't make a decision, you could cause all kinds of problems. It's a problem. Amen? Amen. And this discipline is a decision. It's not an automatic thing. You have to decide to be obedient to what you feel God is leading you to do. And if that means letting go of some stuff, then you gotta let it go. Yeah. This thing of, don't let the enemy believe you that you can straddle the fence and be up here mm -hmm. as a lie in the pit of hell. And even the Bible talks about that. So I'd rather you be hot or cold. Because lukewarm, you just make me. Are y'all hearing me? It don't work. I had to make a decision to change some things. Real talk. And that's a place all of us have to be. So here's my question to you this morning. Are you asking God to give you what's already in you? Are you asking God to give you what's already in you? We talked about this last week. You have the power already in you to end some things. Are you all hearing me? Just like God says, yeah, we'll tear down this temple. But in three days, <laughs> I can raise it back up. He said, I have the power to do some stuff. And there's some things that we have the power to do. There's some situations in our lives that we have the power to end. And it's going to continue until you decide to stop it. And you already have what it takes to do that. But you have to decide why you're holding on to some stuff. What you getting out of it. Why you feel you need that person in your life who every time they open their mouth is make you sick. But for some reason, you won't cut that off. You need to be in that group. You need to hold on to this. You need to hold on to that. And then you go home and you're sick. You have the power to end some things. God has rolled the stone away. Get up. Walk out of some of those situations. A better place is on the outside of the tomb. Amen? Amen. Amen. Someone once said this. Never get so comfortable in pain that you forget happiness is still an option. Some people just stay in stuff too long. They get used to bad things. And they forget there is a better place. Are you all hearing me? Don't get so used to that bad place that you forget there is a good place. There are some entrances that are determined by how well you make some exits. I can say that again. There are some entrances that are determined by how well you make some exits. There are some elevations that you will never attain and that you can never walk into if you don't get them and move some, from some places. It's not that it's not attainable to you. It's just that you won't go there. And you have to decide why not? Why are you holding on to what's stopping you? Why aren't you getting out of those dead limits? You woke. You're up. But you won't take them off and walk up. Are you still waiting for someone to come in the tomb and get you up? See, that's what I'm saying. You have what it takes to walk out, but are you waiting for someone to come and get you? 
So I want to pray for us this morning. I want to pray like Paul prayed over the believers in Ephesus. Let's pray. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened. That we would know the hope of your calling. That the exceeding greatness of your power teach us and help us believe. Help us to see that some things we are asking for is already in us. Now I pray in the name of Jesus that you give us strength, wisdom, and courage to walk out of everything that is holding us back and holding us hostage. In Jesus' name, amen. Put your hands together and give God some praise. It's Sunday morning, people. Amen. The three days is up. Amen. It's resurrection time. Amen? Amen. It's time to revive some of the things that have been dead. Your three days are up. It's Sunday morning. Amen? Amen. Get up out of that tomb. God then rolled the stone away. And know that the only thing keeping you in there is who? And the Holy Spirit wants you to know this morning that all you need to get up and get out, you already have. Let me ask you, God. You got it. Stop allowing the enemy to deceive you and lie to you to make you think that you don't have it. Tell him, I'm done. Amen? Amen. Amen? What I said last week, it's time to bust a move. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's time to get about some of these situations. We have to be keeping ourselves there. Right. Amen. Amen. And like I say all the time, stop worrying about the next person, what they think, when you do, what you feel like you need to do. Amen. Amen. Because yeah. I assure you, when they need to do something, they ain't gonna ask you. And when they didn't finish doing what they got to do, when you see them say, oh, I didn't know you did that. He said, oh, yeah, I did that six months ago. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't checked for you. Amen.